Well, howdy again, everybody. I want to get my South Pole calves out of the 10 heifers that I bought um, registered here soon. I've got some people that are interested in buying some of these bulls. I'm going to keep all the heifers. But I wanted to show you what uh, needs to be done in order to collect the samples to get the sires determined. Um, we know the dam, but get the sires determined so that we can send that information to the South Pole Association and get registration papers. So we've got 10 calves to register. You can see that I've laid out 10 blank tags. Um, I've got a marking pen to uh, write on the tags. I've got a list of the cows and the calves and what their old tag numbers are, what the new tag numbers are. And then I've got the tagger for the Z tags. I've got the DNA sampling gun. And then I've got the tubes that the, the uh, sample from the year goes into so that we can send it to the lab and, and identify the sires. So stay tuned as I show you this process. So I wanted to talk a little bit about preparation for collecting the DNA and having the calves marked appropriately so that I can track the calf to the uh, DNA sample that we take. So prior to us going to the pen, I've taken some Z tags and Z tags are fashioned where there doesn't have the button at the back. They, they are more secure. I have cows every year that lose their tag, and I'm gonna to try to prevent that. So this particular tag uh, has better security than the type with the button on the back. It does require a specific applicator, so it's not a applicator like uh, you typically use with the other brand of tags, but this works well, and so we have all our setup here and what I want to show you is I've numbered these tags 1 through 10. I have 10 calves to tag this year and to do um, DNA testing on so I can get them registered and I've numbered the calves 1 through 10 so this is the first calf uh, of 22 so 0, 1 22 is the year. All of them are going to say the same thing basically other than increase one digit. So this is calf six born in 2022. The bottom number is the calf's mom. So I can be out in the pasture. I can look at that tag and then consult my uh, records in my phone and determine which uh, calf this or which cow this calf was out of. So that can be very helpful depending on what you got going on out of the pasture. So uh, if I knew the sire, I would put the sire number on top of this tag up here. So typically um, you're going to number them bull, calf is in the center, and then the dam is at the bottom. But you can use anything that works for you, but this is just what I've chosen to do. And it is the way the heifers that I uh, brought in that the mamas of these calves, they were tagged the same way at Sassafras Valley Ranch with the sire at the top, calf in the middle, and dam at the bottom. So as I go forward uh, next year with my own bulls, I'll be able to um, add the sire uh, number to the top of the tag. So prior to getting ready, I've made a list. I've got the cow numbers, I've got the calf numbers with their old tag, and let me see if I can get this focused better. So I've got the cow number on the left, I've got the calf um, and the, the tags here, right here, what tags those calves have in them currently, and we will catch them in the chute. We'll cut the old tag out, 
We'll put in the new tag with the appropriate number that we've already made. And so we know that calf number one, his mama is 320. And I've got those all ready written out so that all we have to do is cut out the tag, put the new one in, and collect the DNA sample. So I'm going to number all the heifers that I'm going to keep, uh, one through five, the bull calves, the other half um, will be sold, or there's a couple of them probably I'll have to castrate and just send them on to the auction barn. Um, but we'll see how they grow out here just a little bit more. And I've got a place to put them on so that they're not going to be breeding anything else uh, in the pasture. And we'll get them off the cows and off these heifers. So to write on the tags, we just use an all flex tag pin. And one thing that's important is you need to go over these numbers twice with this pin. So I wrote out the numbers, let the ink dry, and then hit it again. And that's going to etch that number better into the tag. So it's got some longevity and the numbers don't wear off so you can't read them. And then next, you've got to collect your DNA sample. So I ordered these from a company called Neogen. They're all flex DNA sampling tubes and they come uh, numbered so you can't get confused and make a mistake, but you want these numbers <clears throat> to show up. So the first calf that I'm going to tag, he will be any or she will be any 03 three nine zero four six zero and I will write her tag zero one uh, zero one twenty two underneath this little sampling tube so we take out the sampling tube there's space right there to write her new number so we don't get any confusion and then you take this tube and you place it in the gun this gun is a uh, fifty dollar gun and you drop this you drop this tube right into this where it, it's it's ribbed here so it fits appropriately just below this red uh, handle and so then you twist this and it locks that tube in place so it can't move and then you're gonna squeeze this handle and you're going to squeeze it down really hard on top of this little white thing and it will engage that needle. It'll, it, this part is the needle, this white thing above the red, the red handle here. And once you squeeze it, it attaches this to this little plunger that's in here. I'm going to do that and we'll be ready to go when we get to the pin. And so you let that go and then this little red thing peels off and I'm going to leave that on for now as a guard so I don't accidentally this needle super sharp and I don't want to cut myself or cut any of my helpers but we take that guard off and then once we're ready to sample the calf we're going to uh, put this just between the ear veins and just a little about probably about that far from the margin of the ear and then we're going to punch it quick and it's going to punch a small hole in the ear and that sample of tissue will be deposited in this uh, cylinder and then when you're done you just uh, undo this mechanism here so the tube is free to be removed take that out and um, put it into the appropriate place in your rack of tubes here again with your the correct labeling and you're ready to go so they make it very handy this then goes we'll I'll send this off to a company called Neogen and they will um, run the DNA they'll test the calf DNA against the bulls that Sassafras Valley Ranch uh, had in with these heifers. There's five bulls, so they'll have to figure out which bull actually bred these heifers via the calf's DNA. We know the dam's DNA. 
and then we'll send all that information into the South Pole Association and they will uh, put all that information together and provide registration papers. So that's a pretty straightforward process. Um, it's a little bit cumbersome in that um, I had to figure some of this out on my own. Um, thankfully, Bruce Shanks at the Sassafras Valley Ranch helped me figure out the um, forms that I have to fill out for Neogen. They are uh, quite cumbersome. And so we're set up and ready to go, and we're ready to sample these calves. So once the, once the calf is in the chute, we use this tag cutter, slips behind the button, comes off that easy. This is calf number 10, and I'm going to re-tag him, and then we'll get the DNA sample. My, this was calf 10, and on my list I've got him as the number 8 calf. For 2022 out of cow number 1220. So I'm just going through the same the same tag and again this tag doesn't have a button so theoretically it won't be as prone to getting lost and so now we're going to get the DNA sample. So we're going to take the tube that the sample is going to go into, drop it into the gun. We're going to rotate this mechanism to trap that tube. We advance the plunger to engage the needle and now it's armed and then we take off the red thing. And so we're ready to sample the tissue. We're going to come just about an inch about an inch in between the veins and that quick I've got a sample and when I unload the tube you can see that it's foaming which means the preservative is working on that tissue sample hard to see in that tube but there's a sample in there that's just as round as the uh, needle and so if I take that off and show it to you, it's just a round, it's just a round punch. So you get a punch biopsy of that ear. Very painless for these calves. So after we've sampled these calves, then we've placed the uh, little tube containing the, the ear sample in this uh, box that we'll mail in. And we've got the calf numbers identified, 1 through 10. And if there's ever a mix-up, look at the actual tube, and it's going to have the number on it that corresponds with the top number on the box, which you can see there. So it ends in 460 on both. And so we know that everything's matched up. Now, the lab will match it up as well. So if the records are correct on my end, they will be correct on their end. And so this is how you collect those samples. You can see that little piece of ear inside the tube. And they will take that and put it through their testing mechanism to extract the DNA and then match it to the sires. So hope this video helps. I thank you for riding along with me and hope this will help you in your operation if you're registering calves of any breed. And you all have a great day. Thank you very much.